Okay, we're back into uh, section one of chapter three. We're uh, left off where we were talking about what one-to-one -one functions were and how we can tell if they're one-to-one. -one. And we have to remember this very important fact when we're talking about inverse functions. Only one-to-one -one functions can have inverse functions. Now, what is an inverse function by definition? An inverse function, let f be a one-to-one -one function, important. Then g is the inverse of f if the following conditions are both true that if you compose them in either order, f circle g of x, g circle f of x, that you get the identity function, which is x. The identity function, sometimes it's written as i of x is equal to x. You can see why it's the identity. You put 5 in, you get 5. You put 10 in, you get 10. So we get back to x, and this symbol, by the way, means for all or for every. It looks kind of like an upside down capital A with the slash went a little crazy for all x in the domain of g, because that's your first function, and down here for all x in the domain of f, because f is your inside function there, that's the first one that you would take. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to determine if two functions that are given are inverses, and I go right to the definition. I'm going to take these two functions, I'm going to compose them in both orders. So uh, first I'm going to take f, uh, f circle g of x, which is f of g of x, which is f of, now g of x is this expression here, I'll put a bracket, 2 times the quantity x minus 6, and that means I'm going to substitute all of this in the rule for f, so it all goes in right there. So I have 2 times the, rule, uh, times the quantity x minus 6, that's x, plus 6, all divided by 2. Now, if this mess turns out to equal x, I'm well on my way. So let's see what I get here. I distribute. I get 2x minus 12 plus 6, all over 2. Combined like terms, I get uh, 2x minus 6 divided by 2. And if I divide 2 into both, I get, it uh, looks like 2x minus, or excuse me, it looks like I get x, but I get a minus 3 because of the division right here. So this is no good. I don't even have to worry about trying to compose it the other way around. If it doesn't work the first time I do it, if I don't get the identity, nope. Determine whether it's, uh, this function has an inverse, nope. Okay? Now, look over here. I have a couple of rational functions here. I'm going to do the same directions. So first I'm going to take n circle n of x which is m of n of x, and see if I get the identity. So let's see, n of x is the quantity 2x plus 5 all over x. Okay, and now I'm going to take m of this, so I have to plug all of this into the variable right here in the rule for m. So that would be 5 all over this expression, which is 2x plus 5 all over x minus 2. What a mess this is looking like. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x to get rid of the uh, complex rational expression here. So top and bottom by x gives me 5x all over. Now here I'm going to have to distribute so that it'll be 2x plus 5 minus 2x. So this is going to be 5x on top and these are going to cancel so that's just going to give me 5. And look at this. I get the identity. So it works this way. Now if it works the other way, we've got it. So let's go for n circle m of x. Now you're probably wondering, well, if it works one way, aren't we assured that it's going to work the other way if we interchange them? Composition is not commutative. I mean for certain functions it's commutative, but in general it's not commutative for all functions. Therefore, yes, you must go through this and make sure that you get the identity. So I have n circle m of x, which is n of m of x, which should be n of 
Uh, here, we go 5 all over x minus 2. Now I'm going to plug all of this in here and here in the rule for n. So that's going to be 2 times the quantity of 5 over x minus 2 plus 5 all over 5 over x minus 2. I have to plug it in for both spots here because the variable is twice. Now I'm going to multiply top and bottom by x minus 2 to get rid of the complex fraction. So up here I have to distribute x minus 2 times 2 times the quantity of x minus 2. Of course, 2 times 5, uh, 5 over x minus 2. 2 times 5 is 10, so this is just, well, the, the, they're going to cancel the x minus 2, so it's going to give me 10 m, uh, plus 5 times the quantity x minus 2. All right, I distributed. I, okay, now, again, 2 times 5 is 10. That's where this 10 is coming from right here. 2 times 5 is 10. So if that helps here, we'll just put a 10 there. When you multiply by x minus 2, the x minus 2's cancel. That just leaves the 10 plus, and then x minus 2 times 5 is that, all over, down here, 5. So I distribute. I have 10 plus 5x minus 10, all over 5. The 10's cancel. I have 5x over 5, which is x. I get the identity in both, uh, in both orders. So therefore, by definition, therefore, three dots like that, therefore, uh, m and n are inverse functions. Now, what they like to do to show uh, inverse functions is they like to use a special type of notation. Like if I said n is the inverse of m, one way that I can write that is I can write n as m with like looks, like, looks like a negative 1 exponent, but this is inverse function of m when you see that. Now most of the time when we're dealing with functions, we use functions like f or g. So we'll use, for the inverse, we'll use f inverse or g inverse. Again, it's not a negative 1 exponent, it's just a notation for inverses.